uh, welcome to the stream. We uh, we have a, we have a really I, like I'm really excited for today's stream because we have uh, Christoph uh, uh, as the invited guest for our podcast uh, Sundays. Um, so let me try to introduce Christoph before uh, everything else. Let's kill the music, right? We don't need music for this. The, it, it's epic enough that we have Chris as a guest. We don't need the extra music. Uh, <laughs> so let's see. What do we? What do I know about Christoph? So I know he's uh, he, he like he's one of like he worked a lot on the um, P, like PureScript IDE. Uh, what should I call it? Uh, thing. <laughs> I'm not sure what to call it, right? The, like the engine behind all, everything that's PureScript ID, basically, right? The, like the types, uh, uh, especially the type holes, I think, is, is the main, like one of the biggest contributions he's made. But uh, I, he, he did a lot of others as well. Um, I, I, another thing that I know about Christoph is that he, he likes to talk a lot about uh, uh, type inference and uh, typing uh, lambda calculi of, of, all, of all sorts and types uh, uh, and uh, playing all, all of that things. And he's, he's, he's had quite a few presentations with, uh, with that in different languages, actually. I think he had a few in Haskell, even one in Kotlin. And I think he's even used maybe some other languages as well. We, we'll see. We'll definitely get into that. Uh, but uh, like I, I, he... he uh, he, he's a one of the core. Con are you? Is he still a core contributor to the PureScript? I think he is a core contributor to the PureScript co compiler. Um, and yeah, I mean, and, and he loves Emacs. I know that he he's a he's, he's big on Emacs, right? So let's let's find out more about Christoph. Actually, there's one more thing I wanted to share. Let's let's do that now. So uh, I, I'm not even sure when this was. Maybe we can find out. But not like uh, quite some time ago. Uh, back when I was pretty much a, like a huge newbie in PureScript, I was having a problem and I couldn't figure it out. And I, I was asking in the channel and then Christoph was like, uh, well, let, let, let's, let, let's try, let, let me help to debug this with you. And let's, let me see if I can show this. And there you go, like, uh, I still have this screenshot because I like, I found it. And he literally like uh, gave me a hangout and link. And then we jumped on a hangout out of his own free time for like time for, for and he just jumped in a hangout with me and helped me debug this thing. And we definitely, uh, so that was like, what? More than two years ago, apparently. Uh, so yeah, he's like, uh, he's a great guy and uh, I've been looking forward to, to, to chat. So let's uh, let's do the reveal here. Ta-da! Hello, Christoph. <laughs> uh, let, let me also, okay, now so such that Christoph also gets to see this. <laughs> um, so yeah, hello. Um, hi. Um, so yeah, hello. <laughs> hi, Vladimir. How's it going? Yeah. Um, also, chat, please let me know if uh, either my volume or Christoph's volume is either too low or too not, not uh, or, or too high, and we can definitely adjust that. Um, so yeah. Uh, well, hello. How are you today? How are you? I'm doing good. Doing good. Well, now I had a bit of a hangout in the morning, but now I'm doing better. <laughs> so. Cool. Cool. Back from the dead, essentially. <laughs> cool. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're you're feeling better. Um, okay, so let's see what what did I miss from the introduction? Like, how if somebody asked you to introduce yourself, what, what would you add to the list that I've already um, tried to <laughs> to throw in there? Um, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think you I think you caught most of it. I spend most of my time on the most of the open source time I have on the on pure script <laughs> stuff uh, for sure. Even though I don't get to use as much like the language, I still really enjoy working on it as a as a compiler or a, um, as a tooling story. Um, and yeah, m m lots of my more recent effort has been on teaching, and I've been given a comp I, like a, I gave a compiler course on the local university, and yeah, most of that involves building some kind of type inferencing compiler for a functional language. So. You were you were right on that one. So. <laughs> cool, cool. Well, I, I definitely want to know more about that. But uh, the question I love asking everybody that is doing FP is how did you get into FP, right? Because uh, it's something like very few people uh, uh, are like uh, start in FP, right? Uh, and it's usually interesting to, to find how, how people find their way to, to FP. Yeah, so I'm I might be one of the rarer ones then because I mean okay, so I did start with a bit of Java in university, um, but not 
I wasn't into programming at that point in time. I just did just enough Java to like get along in the <laughs> in the course essentially. Course. So you didn't catch your, your interest as much. Your interest as no, much. no, no. I wasn't really considering myself a programmer by then. I was just <laughs> studying that. Um, and then uh, at some point, I started using Python actually. Okay. Um, for my little hacks and I still, I mean, I was very far from being a professional programmer, right? I was still just hacking around university and learning, learning the ropes essentially. And I started, like I picked up Python. I really liked it as a language. Um, well, back then essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, and I built my little scripts and programs and little UIs and whatnot. And I kept hitting that, that like hard break of, I don't know. 400 lines and anything beyond that is no longer fun to work on because <laughs> you, you I, I couldn't fit it into my head at once anymore mm -hmm. now as a programming that's a skill you kind of pick up so by now i could certainly write a larger python program than that <laughs> but that would still be a hard limit somewhere where mm -hmm. i'd need to apply a lot of design work and in order to to kind of figure out what the different parts of the program would do and yep. then I read somewhere that this is supposed to be easier if you use a typed <laughs> functional language. So I picked up and I like puzzles. So I picked up Haskell and <laughs> tried to do it like, do it like as a puzzle, puzzle kind of language thing. And then, um, but what I noticed is that I could just keep going for a much longer time. If I wanted to build a program in Haskell, I wouldn't hit that limit so quickly because all the types kind of. Okay. Drew the drew the design, and you could come back to something after a while, and still wouldn't all be exploding. Um, this this sounds a lot to me like the do you know the Seinfeld yada 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 episode where they're skipping over the most interesting part? You kind mm -hmm. of it's just like you're doing that, like well, yeah. So I, I did some Python, and then I learned Haskell, and then it it was fine, right? <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> As if you learned Haskell in an afternoon or something. So how did uh, so, that go I mean, for you? So yeah, I mean that was I did I did read what I wish I know what I did read the what's that the the bad Haskell book. Um, <laughs> the bad Haskell book. <laughs> I, I don't want to say I don't want to try to guess because then I'll, I'll I'll upset somebody if I get it wrong. So <laughs> um, it's the one where uh, what's it called again? Okay, I'll just try. Is it learning a Haskell? Yes, exactly that one. <laughs> Whew. Okay, I, I only upset at most a couple of people. But... <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so I read that one, yeah. So <laughs> And I, I typed out all the stuff that it has in there. And then after I was done with that, I realized I still couldn't write a single line of Haskell that worked. <laughs> um, but then I found, I actually found a couple of YouTubers that did Haskell at the time. <laughs> kind of a long... Um, I think that was like in 2012, maybe 2013. Oh. Um, and I, was, I think one of the names was Jcore, Jcore or something. And another one, I, I don't remember the name, but that was a video that really got me into it or like that got me started on my real first program. That was a, um, a video of someone building a calculator with parse like with a parser in parsec okay in front of it right and then they also added a bit more like use a definable function so it was kind of an actually kind of a compiler thing <laughs> um but really cool. the thing that was so cool to me back then was the parsing and i got yeah, yeah. back and i wrote a bunch of parsers for all kinds of stuff uh, because that was so fun that's something that's very rare to find in a non-functional languages like a good parser combinator library yeah, and I, I mean, I, I, again, I was really new to programming, so I knew that was regex, but I hadn't used them for anything interesting. <laughs> and, um, well, lucky me, because I never picked up that <laughs> skill, so I learned how to properly do parsing now. <laughs> yep, cool. Um, okay, so, yeah. It, yeah, it wasn't a straightforward journey for you either, right? You kind of stumbled yeah. into, like, one book, and then that wasn't... Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. But um, I didn't have the problem that I was like already a seasoned OO mm -hmm. programmer or anything. <laughs> it was it was just as new. Like functional programming was just as new as any other kind of programming I could have run into. And so right, I so didn't have any expectations. Right, like what should this yeah. be like? Right, or not a lot of like very. It, okay. it also didn't feel like weird or wrong to me that mm -hmm. some things were harder were hard. 
that okay. so, had, I, had I already been used to just being able to do all kinds of IO stuff or low globals or whatnot, then it would maybe have been bothering me more that these things are basically impossible. <laughs> yeah, well, why can't I do this thing that's easy, right, in yeah. these other languages? Yeah, that, that, that's a, like a common complaint to, for people learning Haskell as a second, third, nth language where they're already used to like declarative, not sorry, not declarative, imperative languages, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, okay, cool. So um, I have one, I had, let me remember, I had an interesting question that just slipped my mind. <laughs> Um, so you're saying that you've learned um, Haskell. I, I it totally slipped my mind. Okay, let, let, let's 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 continue, yeah. and uh, maybe we'll get back to it. Um, I am, I mean, maybe I could give you a bit more. So when I mm -hmm. so learning how like so okay. I, I knew how to write parsers with parsec essentially. Okay. Um, and but I hadn't really understood any of the functor applicative monad hierarchy or, or anything like that. All I knew how to do was do notation mm -hmm. right and i knew the difference between a do notated variable binding essentially and a normal variable binding mm -hmm. i kind of knew how to fix that and then i also at the same time needed to write a web app and i hadn't learned javascript yet so i didn't know javascript mm -hmm. um, but i needed to do that for a university project or kind of um and because I already kind of knew Haskell, I was looking for ways to use a similar language or to use a functional language. And so that's mm -hmm. when I discovered PureScript at oh. version 0.6.2 or something like that. Oh. So one of the very okay. early ones. <laughs> <clears throat> cool. And then, and then I also kind of wanted to get into open source. And so what I did was I looked into the PureScript issues and there was one which was like, um, leading like numbers shouldn't allow leading zeros or something so that you <laughs> that zero zero wouldn't parse as the int mm -hmm. zero right and um and so that was the so actually that was the that first pr i okay. did cool. gary helped me with that and i could <laughs> use the fact like the fact that i knew how to do parsec stuff made it so that i could actually contribute that mm -hmm. and that got me kind of started on cool. working on script so you're you're still in college when you did that right Yes, yes, I was. Mm -hmm. Yes, cool. So I actually remembered. What we were, uh, I actually remembered what I was going to ask you. So, because uh, I, I know, like now, you, you you're quite interested in at least type theory and some of the like math or computer science behind FP, right? Mm -hmm. and I'm not sure if how deep that goes, and uh, if you're interested in some parts of it or more, and maybe we can you can tell that to later. We can talk about that later. But uh, as as curious whether you use math in any way to learn functional programming, or you just learned it as a programming language with no re relationship to math, and you just maybe later learn some math concepts related to FP. Yeah, so I. I did actually study a semester of math and it was all way too abstract for me and I didn't like it. So I <laughs> got into uh, programming. So I studied informatics, right? Or computer science. And then um, <laughs> through Haskell, I ended up doing the much more abstract math stuff <laughs> at some point. But, um, but yeah, not but as you're learning, right? Uh, Haskell. Hmm? Not as you were learning Haskell, right? Not oh, no, no. I, I mean, th the math stuff, um, yeah, it's more of a... Um, I learned a few of the math things on top of what I knew in, in FP and kind of extrapolated from there. But I, I never had the math understanding that would then let me learn something in Haskell easier. It would always go the other way around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, okay, that, that's pretty interesting. So we have a couple of questions mm -hmm. in chat. Uh, um, Vince, uh, CMDV, is asking, when did your hair get so long? <laughs> I guess. Yeah, that's yeah. That's all Corona, yeah. Corona, <laughs> Corona hair. Okay, cool. Um, and then Palu said that the video, it was probably the Jcore channel, one of the oldest. Yes. Uh, okay, cool. So he actually found the video. Cool. <laughs> Good find, Palu. Uh, right. Uh, and then, yeah, Gil Christian says the hair import, the hair question is important. Okay, we, we got to it. <laughs> we solved the mystery. <laughs> got it. And Vince said it looked beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. Yeah, Vince, Vince would wish he had my hair. <laughs> Ooh, burns. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, okay, so you already covered that you like your first pure script PR, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what was the journey from that to working on the typed holes thing, which uh, I think is a like. Uh, like one of the like did you do any contribution that was as big as that before it or was that like the biggest contribution oh, 
Yeah, so, okay, so there's actually, that's that's kind of a jump. So the first mm -hmm. PR I did, right, the parser thingy, step one, the fact that that was uh, a success and and uh, it got me into PR school was that Gary was there all the way and helped me, and he, like, helped me learn how to do, how to fix the problem, essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, he, I mean, he probably invested a couple hours when he could have fixed it in 10 minutes by himself, but instead <laughs> he helped me fix it. And so he, that investment paid off in the long run, I'd say. Um, what I then did was I ran off and built PSE IDE, which is the, 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 the IDE mm -hmm. server that you run now, right? And that was a project um, in its own repo, and it wasn't in the compiler repo for a okay. while until we, uh, and I, they spent lots and lots of hours on that. Um, when I, because I was still a student, so I had the time. And then um, when that became useful and people kept using it, we um, we eventually moved that into the in the into the compiler, and that's still the largest body of code in the compiler that I own. Okay. Um, the typed holds thing um, was actually I was looking to write my bachelor's thesis, and I um, had talked mm -hmm. about this with Phil that that might be like we had kind of figured out that that might be something that could work. Mm -hmm. And um, I ended up getting Phil, the original author of Pure Script, to uh, to supervise me during the bachelor's thesis, and that's <laughs> that's when we when when that code was written. But that's basically I didn't, that's like 500 lines of code. Oh, okay. That's yeah. kind of that's kind of the beauty of it is that <laughs> it's so simple because it reuses lots of the type like the machinery that the, the type check already has. Mm -hmm. And it's actually the same thing for Haskell. So the GHC implementation also just stitches together a few of the <laughs> pieces of um, functionality the type checker already has. Uh, cool. Okay, so that yeah. actually is okay. So you you did a lot more work on the like initial implementation of PSCID than on the actual type holes implementation, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, I guess like the like PSCID has a lot of uh, like stuff with like uh, pipes and networking and uh, like a lot of handling, a lot of like uh, edges of the system thing where usually not very interesting, but you have to write quite a bit of code, right, to to handle like parsing, serialization. Right. I mean, it's also it's also basically like a little database that you can query, mm -hmm. um, right? It indexes all your de declarations in a way that is easily searchable by name. When the compiler would never do that because <laughs> it, that that's just not a thing the compiler usually has to do. So mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah, PSID is a kind of like an index on the side for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. uh, so Vince, I think he might be a bit late to the show. So ask, how did you find PureScript? Have you done any OSS stuff prior to that? Uh, not really. No, PureScript was my real my first real open source project. I had done a bit of stuff with other people like with uh what's the name for that i don't know other people that were studying with me and we mm -hmm. had like little repos where we would put our work but we hadn't really nothing open source so. okay cool and i think you said that you found pure script when we were doing some javascript for the university right for a project or something yes exactly mm -hmm. i was looking for ways to not use javascript <laughs> to actually not do that <laughs> yeah and that wasn't because i knew how bad javascript was like I, I i had no idea back then oh i remember now i know exactly how i learned a few script that was because i watched bodil stockes talk on it oh okay and cool. strangely i believe mm -hmm. okay was, yeah cool yeah. Oh, so you're like watching probably the, the, the some of the talks at the conference because you're interested in Haskell, right? And you saw a talk about PureScript and like, okay, cool, that's interesting, right? Yes, exactly. Cool, cool. Uh, so Vin says, oh, the, is it the animation uh, talk that uh, like Bodil's animation talk or did? Probably. I know there's a, the, it's the one with the Doge, I believe. The Doge, Flappy Bird, Flappy, Flappy Bird, but there's Doge, I think. <laughs> yeah. Cool. No, or it was pony stuff. I don't know. It's <laughs> it's one of it's one of Bodil's talks. After all, she, she's just she's just super fun and terrific. That's just yeah. Yep. Cool. Um, right. So let's see. Well, I mean, so, so you said you landed into PureScript at version zero point six, was it? Or somewhere around five? there. I don't know. Yes, oh. I think zero six three or something. Yeah. So I think I landed in like. When when we when did we get rid of F like zero twelve right? That's zero twelve, yeah. Yeah, so I think I, I literally use zero oh. eleven for a while, and then I I uh, and then yeah, we switched to twelve. I think so. 
that's I don't possible, think, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think I caught like 0 10, so I think 0 11 was the first version. I <laughs> Yeah, we had I we saw. had a we had a release called Burning Bridges in there, which broke even more than 0 12, <laughs> but the ecosystem was a lot smaller back then. So. Yeah. I mean, zero twelve didn't even bring that break that much because, like, I mean, it broke a lot of code, but it was very easy to to change it, right? Because you just have to remove the <laughs> labels and throw a fact yeah. instead of f. Yeah, but I mean, it did break every piece of Fiesta code. Oh, yeah, then, yeah, cause... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that wasn't just pure functions, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, sure. Exactly. Uh, cool. So okay, I, I've seen I've seen you like contribute to the pure script repository quite a bit, but I've also seen you talk a lot about Rust, about uh, OCaml occasionally, mm -hmm. obviously about Haskell. Although you, I mean, I guess you're you're much closer to the pure script community than the Haskell community, but we know that you also do or like you also like Haskell or at least uh, mm -hmm. are able to do Haskell. <laughs> uh, yes. So OCaml Kotlin again is something that's. Pretty new. I've seen you talk and, and do a talk with, uh, using Kotlin on uh, like uh, writing some um, uh, what was it type inference mechanism or something like that. Mm -hmm. or am I, something yeah, like it was that, a right? type checker with Hindley Manor mm -hmm. style type inference. Yeah, yeah. So so yeah, it, it seems to me like you're uh, you like a lot of different languages. So did I miss any language that you're? Or of course, then you probably do a lot of Elisp, right? Uh, <laughs> or not a lot, uh, yeah, but some at course. least. <laughs> so yeah, so I. I I, I usually see, or like I use languages as tools um, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. And so I try to pick the pick the language that fits the job that I kind of need to do. So when you hear me talk about OCaml, that's probably because I'm ranting because I need to use that for work because the, <laughs> the compiler I write, I work on at work is written in OCaml. Uh, it's probably not a language I'd pick up for a project of my own. Okay. Uh, um, but I mean, it's still, it's still a fine functional language. It's just, uh, I've I've come to really like the, the like the abstraction facilities a language like pure script Haskell gives me, um, mm -hmm. and when I give those up, I want something very good in return. Like for <laughs> example, when I use Kotlin, the primary reason for me using Kotlin is that uh, when I or like the reason. So the thing that makes me pick Kotlin for something is if I'm teaching something mm -hmm. because um, for the uh, for the course at, at the university that I'm giving, um, all of the students have learned Kotlin as their language in which they learn to program essentially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. at, so, so the thing so, that the language is giving you is that people are familiar with it, right, in the university and then you don't have to bother with teaching them basics, right? Exactly, yes. And it also, um, so that wouldn't work if it was Java because Kotlin has the, so really all I need to build a compiler and a type checker is algebraic data types and recursive functions. Mm -hmm. And Kotlin has both of these. Java doesn't, um, <laughs> it's, it actually gets soon-ish. Um, but until then Java, still, because it doesn't have algebraic data types, right? You can't, mm -hmm. you can't do proper stuff that you need um, to write all the um, yep. inheritance nonsense yourself, which is. Okay. So what about Rust? Because I've, I've you've seen you talk a lot about Rust, like maybe a year ago mm -hmm. or something, or two years ago. Is that something that you've worked professionally with, or just interested in on your own free time, or what's the? Story I have of actually Rust? worked with it professionally now. Yes. Mm -hmm. So Rust is when so when I need to build something that ends up being a well, for one, I think I think um, so. I hadn't learned a new language for a while, and Rust looked really interesting, and I hadn't. I don't know C well, and I don't know C plus plus well, so I thought um, that would that that's kind of like a glaring omission in the set of skills I have. I need to <laughs> I need to learn a systems language, mm -hmm. um, and Rust does fit that bill because it's well, it's, it shares a lot of values with the language that I've learned so far. Right, mm -hmm. um, taking type safety seriously, um, expressing. Expressing lots of the logic you, you'd want in a program in the types. And at the same time, I think one of the things that Rust gets really right is the focus on good tools and the nice package manager. So Cargo is fantastic. Um, and Cargo has learned a lot of lessons from Cabal, mm -hmm. um, which is, uh, um, and at the same time, their focus on tooling is um, kind of reminds me of how we do things in PureScript. I think PureScript is actually focused on tooling a lot more than what you'd see in Haskell. Right? Oh yeah, right. A change, a change to the compiler that makes tooling harder, 
Um, well, you're going to have to fight me for that if you want to get into pure script. <laughs> um, but in Haskell, that's basically that's that's usually not a consideration. If it's if it's something that you can write an interesting paper about, it's good enough for the compiler essentially. Oh, I mean, I, I'm even surprised that they were able to like combine efforts from from the multiple like JCID and uh, like uh, what was it? Uh, Haskell ID engine was mm-hmm. the two project that basically merge into Haskell language server. I'm even surprised they did that, but I don't expect they'll ever, they'll ever, or at least in the next few, like five to ten years, be able to merge that into the Haskell code base, right? Like pure script right. ID was, right? I, that might even never happen, but definitely not in the next like five to ten years. So right. yeah, and, and, and until and, and until it's part of the compiler, I don't think you can ever get first class support. I mean, I think they've they've made huge progress on that, right? But mm-hmm. they spend they they expended lots and lots of work on that. Mm-hmm. Um, in PureScript, that's we didn't put that much work in, <laughs> and still, I think right now the experience is a lot better if you use PureScript oh, yeah. in terms of tooling because the the language server there still has space leaks left and right, and it takes forever to load up on anything non-trivial, and it's probably going to choke on CPP, and it's probably not going to work <laughs> well with half of the extensions that you ha- end up having in your projects. And, oh, yeah. Right. Oh, so, so I think, like, the yeah, it's amazing, because, like, the, like, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say that you did, a, like, you did a lot of work on that, but you're one person, and I think, you like, I think there has have been a couple of contributions other than yours on the PAC ID, but not a lot, right? So you're, like, by far the biggest contributor to that. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, most of the most of the, the the other person that has put a lot of work in there is Nicholas mm-hmm. um, and Wolferson, oh, yeah. Nicholas mm-hmm. Wolferson, right? Um, who's he's written all the all the VS Code and Atom mm-hmm. plugins and mm-hmm. uh, lots of work around that, and also the LSP wrapper, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. kind of uses the Node library oh, yeah. system mm-hmm. to. Um, and he's also contributed a bunch to the compiler, uh, okay. to the to the IDE part of the compiler. Yeah, but okay, other than uh, that, it's mostly been me. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of two people that that did some work on it, uh, and then mm-hmm. if you look at Haskell, how many people have been working on all of the different versions of language servers and tooling and extensions for all the like uh, very very different extensions for all of the different like uh, IDs and editors and so on. Like it's insane how how PureScript is still ahead, <laughs> right? With like probably five fifty times less effort <laughs> or I mean, even more. It, yeah, it's, it's crazy, it's, it, right? It, it, it's on that order of magnitude for sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, and... it's like Haskell is right now barely starting to, to compete, right, with Haskell Language mm-hmm. Server, like barely getting close to being able to say, okay, we're kind of on par with PureScript, uh, maybe in a I few mean, versions or something. They, they have a couple of features we don't have, right? The, they, can do, they can do things we can't do, but the thing that I find much more important than having fancy features is um, absolute reliability mm-hmm. and... Um, speed and, and ease of I installation. Think. I think it's because ease like, of again, installation, yeah. language Haskell server. It's kind of okay. Works on VS Code easily, but not on the other. The others is not that easy to set up. Uh, at least right. Yet. Yeah. The thing that I need, like that, I had tried to set up and got frustrated with and got really angry at was GHC mod because oh, that yeah. was the back in the day, <laughs> um, and. At some point, I just gave up, right? So GHC ID, so GHC ID is the only thing I use these days for mm-hmm. writing Haskell. Um, but um, that was the thing I didn't want to do because it also had like a bunch of fancy features, but they'd only work two out of ten days or something, <laughs> um, which is which just makes you not want to use a tool, right? A tool that works nine out of ten times, I don't want to use that um, because yeah. that's. Just but then, then again, disruption. again, like most of the problems of the GHC mod and GHC IDE, like the E version and mm-hmm. uh, all of those, was mostly because they weren't shipped with a compiler, I think. Like, because you, like a lot of the problems were you need a different version of GHC mod if you ch- swap compiler versions, you need a different mode or like version of whatever, you need to recompile this from source if you want to use the latest GHC or whatever, right? Whereas with PureScript, you just download the PureScript compiler and you also have the IDE. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, I think the other part is the design of them in the sense that in uh, in the, so GHC mod and even Haskell language uh, now, um, what they do is they they reach very far and deep into the compiler and try to like preserve the type checker state or something and preserve individual like they try to do very much with the uh, compiler internals, mm-hmm. um, but. Th- because GHC is a batch compiler, that really doesn't work when the file is in an invalid state because the type checker just doesn't 
doesn't work like that essentially. And so, so what we do in in PSQL IDE is um, we just we mostly rely on like we can always work with just the incremental compiler output, so the incremental build products of the compiler, which are basically always there, um, and um, and then we we add more features on top of that, but you basically you can it, uh, it the feature set kind of decays as your file becomes less valid essentially, mm -hmm. um, but you never it never stops working. Yeah, you enough. have like a baseline of features that work, and then you can put more and more on top. The in mm -hmm. like the better your file works, essentially. Yeah, that makes sense. So Vin says, wasn't that always like that though? Didn't he used to be standalone? Yeah, I think Christoph mentioned that. Like initially, he mm -hmm. he wrote it in a separate repository, and then at some point, it got merged into the main uh, uh, compiler repository. Yeah. Yeah, and that I mean that that's huge. Yeah, definitely. The 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 version mismatches were the reason we ended up putting it into the compiler <laughs> repo because yeah, yeah as you say, uh, things is things are constantly busted if you have to try and match up these two versions. Oh yeah, uh, it works great on Windows. Yeah, I mean it's <laughs> that's that's another thing, right? Like Haskell as like a language which has orders of magnitude, probably more contributors and uh, uh, people watching than PureScript is like the Windows story is barely now getting better, right? <laughs> uh, whereas I, I, I like I, I haven't used Windows in a long time. And what you're seeing here is like, I just I don't code on this Windows machine. <laughs> so uh, I and, uh, yeah, I haven't tried PureScript now in a long time on Windows, but I like last time I used it, it worked just fine on Windows. I, I don't remember having any trouble with it. Whereas, whereas with Haskell, <laughs> it's not quite the same thing. Yeah, you kind of like, yeah, it, it's a lot rougher. So that's okay. Um, 